Okay, welcome to today's um, XMPP Office Hours talk. Um, I'm Fabian Saut, and I'm going to introduce you today how to find Windows and XMPP, and by the way, build a modern-ish looking uh, Windows XMPP client for Windows. I have a couple of words from my side. Um, I'm com currently a, a computer science student in Germany, more concrete in Munich, and I'm finishing up my master's, and usually uh, my daily driver system is a Linux system, to be more concrete, a Fedora system, and I'm usually developing only for Linux uh, with GTK and GNOME. So that's quite uh, quite different from my side. And yeah, let's get started. Um, I'm going to use it today how to develop uh, and fight Windows at the same time. So what is UWPX? UWPX is my Windows 10 client for sending XPP chat messages and connecting to XMPP accounts. It is available for all Windows 10 devices. That means it is available for IoT devices, which is, uh, for example, a uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, it would be able to for Windows mobile phones, for PCs, X Xboxes, and HoloLenses. Here you can see a couple of screenshots from the PC version with light mode, uh, dark mode. Then um, we have it also, it also runs on the HoloLens, like I've said earlier. Here's an example of that, how you connect the HoloLens, and then it looks something like this. Um, you could you please ignore the black background if you make a screenshot on the HoloLens, it blows or makes the complete uh, camera capture black and only shows the actual image. I don't know why. Then um, it even runs on mobile phones. Uh, that's my trusty old Windows 10 mobile phone, um, and it even runs on that. It looks something like this on this one, and yeah, basically it runs on all. Windows 10 devices, which are which have a Windows 10 version, which is newer than 2019. So sadly, my Windows phone, my old trusty Windows phone, doesn't support it anymore because the last update it got was in the end of 2017, the last real update. So I had to deprecate the uh, client for Windows phones. What are the features of this client? Well, basically, obviously, obviously it is able to chat. Uh, you have some kind of typing indicator quite, since quite recently. You can have presence indication. You can change your own presence and all the basic stuff there. You can send Omemo encrypted messages most of the time uh, if it's working. Um, more on that later. You can manage fingerprints from those people. And currently, I'm supporting Omemo 0.8.1. So um, it's the most recent Omemo standard and why I support this one, uh, we will see it later. Besides that, uh, it obviously also supports group chats and uh, has multi-account support. It has a nice onboard, new user onboarding experience, so new users get introduced to what is XPP, how, do it, how they can set up an account, how they can log into an account, and if they don't have an account, they can even register for an account because there I'm using the uh, curated server list, which is provided and show the user there are a couple of suggested servers, and then they can decide on one and click on the register button and the register button then brings them to the register page of this server provider. I decided against to, to implement the in-band regi in registration because most of the server providers don't even support it, so it would be wasted resources. Besides that, there's a far longer list of features I'm supporting. Um, if you would like to have a look at that, uh, just visit the Git site, GitHub site or web page. Uh, you can find this one in the shared notes. Now, just a couple of, of uh, fancy statistics about the client. Um, well, I have currently roughly 237 concurrent users per month. Um, it says daily users nine. That's completely wrong. and um, I don't know why in the Windows Store uh, publication website it says something completely different, but uh, the only thing that actually matches is the monthly concurrent users. Besides that, um, the most common languages on my client is used is English, German, and Russian. And usually a user has roughly between two and four sessions per day, and it also makes sense. The, sessions, the session duration is between zero and 10 seconds, which actually makes sense because you receive a message, reply to a message, and then close the client again. So yeah, just uh, so much to, to the statistics. 
Um, let's continue with a little bit of history. That's basically an overview of about all the releases I have done for this client. Um, I started developing it in the end of 2017, to be more concrete in September 2017. And the first version, which I actually got released, was in the 1st of January of 2018. And then I tried to continue with a monthly release schedule. And so each green dot here represents a monthly release. And a red dot here is a, a skipped month. Um, yeah, so it was mostly successful with that. So why did I decide to build on XMPP client? And why did I decide to build a chat client with XMPP? Well, like all great stories, uh, I and a friend of mine were sitting into, in the university in a boring maths lecture, and we were starting, starting to talk about interesting stuff, about technology and so on. So then my friend told me, well, I have found this really new cool application. It runs on my Android phone. It's called Conversations. You are able to send XMPP messages with it. And XMPP is basically the protocol which was used by WhatsApp in earlier days and is completely open source and it's nice. Uh, why don't we talk with each other no, only uh, over XMPP um, since it's open source and, and we don't have to use WhatsApp anymore. So then I said, oh, right, cool. Just let me get out my trusty old Windows phone, a Windows phone and get in the store and search for an XPP client. Um, and there was actually one, which I was quite surprised of. Um, it was called IM Plus. So I was quite happily downloading it and starting it and then it crashed. Okay, then I thought, yeah, well, give it another try. Went back, started it again and it crashed again. Then I thought, okay, that's quite usual behavior for Windows Phone apps. They usually crash, even the browsers or the system utilities crash from time to time and quite regularly. So just try it again a couple of more times. So I started again and it crashed again. Uh, turned out this IM Plus messenger was developed for Windows Phone 7, then ported to Windows Phone 8, and in Windows Phone 10, it broke and never got maintained again. And since it wasn't open source or I did find, didn't find any way, where I could find it open source, uh, I, I was unable to send message, uh, was unable to use it on my Windows 10 mobile device. Then my friend said, well, <laughs> why do you use such a stupid phone where, you, where you're unable to install basic applications like an XMPP client or a chat client? Well, then I said, because I really love the operating system and I really like how it looks. And then he said, well, self is the computer design. Why don't you build your own XMPP application so we can chat with each, with each other? Then I said, well, challenge accepted. Um, and two days later, in the next boring math lecture, we again sat next to each other. And then I went, Let's have a look. I, I implemented my first version of my XMPP client. Uh, it looks something like this. And I'm able to send messages from you and you are able to send messages from me. I'm able to use presence. Tech, uh, I, I, I'm able to see your presence. Um, I, you can change my presence and so on. And I can manage my rooster. So now what? Um, then he said, well, looks quite nicely, but what happens if I send you a message in the background and the app is not running? Uh, then I said, oh, well. Um, <laughs> and there was, an, was, an, was other stuff like sending images also, which wasn't supported back then. And yeah, for all of those who know, um, if you have ever worked on a mobile device or developed an application for a mobile device, the operating system itself kills or suspends applications which are running in the background quite frequently to save battery power. So needs, you need some kind of push server to send messages. And um, that's the reason why I didn't receive messages in the background uh, for such a quite a long time. Then a couple of months later, in the first of, of, of um, January 2018, I released the first version of my client. And by the way, the first commit was on the 9th of September, 2017. And just a side note, uh, we had maths lecture between 8.15 and 9.45 in the morning. After that, I went home and directly started working on my client. And here you can see the old logo of the client back then. So, uh, and then the first version was on the 1st of January and it looked something like this. You were able to uh, 
um, same chat messages. We were able to view your subscriptions and Disco uh, stuff. You were able to log in. Yeah, and do basically the same things um, I already had after two days, but more robust and actually able to be published to other people. After that, I continued and then and a couple of days later for, um, in the end of this month, I released the second release of my client with uh, basic MOOC support. You were able to send, you were able to discover group chats, you were able to join them and you were able to create them. And yeah, that was inside the second version. After that, uh, in the next version, I uh, extended the MOOC support a bit, added roosters, uh, added bookmarks, I added managing members, changing settings of the MOOC, of the group chat, and so on. After that, um, I started working on the AI in the next couple of releases a bit and added better bookmark support. And in version seven, uh, the first time Microsoft uh, came into play because I successfully published this release because I had a nice idea since people were asking me how they could support me because they really liked the client and it was the only one available for Windows Phone back then and is also today. Um, then I decided since I already have seen it in a couple of other open source applications on Windows that they added such um, in-app purchase buttons where you could support developer by, for example, spending him a, a cup of coffee or sell, giving a, a meal paying him for a meal and this worked fine. I added this stuff, published it to the Microsoft store. Later this month, I had to publish a quick hotfix for stuff. And I got this message. Well, you, your app needs some attention. Turned out they rejected it because I had in-app purchases. And turns out you are not allowed on the Windows store to have in-app purchases without any reward for the user. So you have to give the user at least some kind of badge or something else which he gets to be able to have an in-app purchase. I don't know why, um, and I didn't want to do any kind of badges or something like this because, well, why should I? Uh, so I decided to switch over and go to PayPal or LibrePay uh, so people could support me there. And then I still, after I removed everything, had still in the store this free plus icon. So the application basically was still free, but it has noted, well, you, uh, there are in-app purchases. And I, then I tried to get rid of that because actually nobody ever tried it because it was only up for such a short amount of time um, and asked Microsoft if they could remove it because I removed that. Then they said, no. Then I asked why. Then they said, because um, your app has in-app purchases. Then I said, no. I removed it and it was an old version. They said, well, um, some people could have this old version. Then I showed them nobody has this old version because everybody updated already and nobody actually bought it. it even uh, only I have bought it once to test it. And then they said, no, you have to live with it. And that's the only answer I got. Uh, and why? I don't, I don't know. And so during the complete alpha phase of the application, I had this free plus also I didn't have any in-app purchases available. After that uh, challenge, I started working on, uh, on Memo. With the first version of Memo, I was able to generate keys, show them as fingerprints. And the funny thing with that is, I started implementing Memo with version 0 0.3, the encryption. And for that, you need some kind of, well, libsignal library. So then I went to the search for a libsignal library for C Sharp which the client has written in. Turns out there are quite a lot of them, but none of them are compatible with Windows Universal Platform because it was back then a completely new platform. Nobody was developing for it and you had to recompile or change um, system calls to be working on um, Windows Universal Platform. Then I finally found one which was quite outdated and was a basically a copy paste of the Java code and rewritten in, 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 in C Sharp with an automatic tool. Well, and the library worked most of the time and I'm sure it has quite a lot of flaws and security issues, but I was so happy that I found one and didn't have to port it myself that I used it for the first couple of months uh, of the app's lifetime. 
And this release also got text highlighting. It got basic push messages. If you, for example, send a message in another chat, uh, you will receive a push message message and it got message carbons. Then a month later, I finally published the first working um, working OMEMO implementation. Uh, it still was breaking sometimes because I didn't really understand the except uh, and it was really strange to me since I never have worked with some kind of encryption before. After that, uh, I was so frustrated with all the OMEMO stuff that I started to have a look at the user interface because I noticed, oh, actually people are using the application and they're complaining about the ugly user interface that it doesn't really match Windows. So I decided to update the user interface, add all this new fancy Windows acrylic background that shines through. Um, and yeah, here's another example. And that's really the point where I started uh, seeing a point into doing user interfaces because before of that, I thought of user interfaces into always as rather boring stuff, and I didn't want to do anything with them. Uh, and that's actually the time when it changed my mind that uh, it could be quite rewarding because, for example, if you work the, the whole time in the background uh, and in your back end, you don't really see a change. And if you do that for a long time, it's it could be frustra frustrating. Um, and then if you work in a user interface, if you change the background color, for example, you immediately see a, see a change. And that's the thing I really like about the user interfaces. And I started to read me into, me myself into that and how colors work, uh, what is consistent color generation, what colors are available, how to do effects, how to use shaders and so on. After that, I continued working on the OMEMO implementation and, and had a small breakthrough. Um, with that, so it was working, working more of the time. And I don't know if you know, but Windows has quite a nice emoji picker. If you press the Windows key and the dot key, you can bring up this really, really nice emoji picker. One, block, one problem with it, you can't programmatically call it. I think this is, a, this is a really big oversight in my eyes. So even if you could, you could simulate the Windows key and dot uh, pressing by application, but there are limitations in place from the Windows Universal Platform Framework, so it doesn't really work reliable. And if it, even is if it even if it's working, um, the position of this overlay for the emoji picker is quite of it's rather broken. Then, uh, so then I decided to work on my own emoji picker, which was also quite an interesting experience because I started parsing all the emojis from the Unicode Foundation and adding them to my own font here and then showing them in a rather performant manner in the user interface. Because if you are showing emojis, well, you don't you don't only show two emojis, you have to show them thousands of emojis at once. So you have to think a little bit of, of about performance. And that's what I uh, try to do there. Yeah, and after that, um, I continued uh, redesigning the user interface. There, Stephanie gave me a lot of tips and had me design, for example, the background here or design for me the background here. And she was quite a, a lot of help with that. And then uh, the next release got the new logo, which you can see here. And the, finally, the first working um, UI redesign release. Yeah, there. And in the settings, I even added small indications what um, the settings actually do because I find it quite useful if it's explained with some kind of GIF or something like that, what the settings are actually doing. And at the top, you can see even um, Omemo, you are, uh, since this release, you are able to scan QR codes with your camera and it automatically validates the fingerprints. Okay, then let's continue the end of 2019 uh, introduced to me the end of Windows Phone because I had quite an unpleasant experience. I was at the Sprint in Berlin and there I wanted to take back the train in the evening and I thought I could rely on my phone to remind me one hour early to so I don't miss my train. But uh, there was the time change from summertime to winter time, so the calendar broke and reminded me one hour too late on my actual train uh, the parting, and so I missed it and had to instead of taking the train from Berlin to Munich, Munich which takes only three hours, I had to drive overnight and with a ten hour 
uh, ICE from Berlin to Munich. And that's the point where I said to myself, okay, this operating system is dying. Microsoft isn't uh, working on it anymore so, anymore. so I will also abandon it and switch phones. Yeah, and the final release of um, which got the Windows, the final release Windows Phone got was with MOOC, the group chat members management, and you were able to invite people to group chats. Okay, then over Christmas and uh, in the beginning of 2020, I decided, okay, um, I remove all the Windows Phone compatibility code and the Windows Store itself got really bad. At one point, it even didn't show images or the downloads were failing all the time. The search was continuously broken and the Windows Store was just abominable. And uh, quite, I think, yeah, it was roughly six months of a broken Windows Store which we had and uh, it wasn't even wasn't even showing um, screenshots of applications you would wanted to download since quite recently, since they published a new version of the Windows Store. So, well, um, I decided I need my own solution that I wrote my own installer for Universal Windows Platform apps. And one problem with that, if you download this installer, the installer is roughly 400 megabytes in size. Well, why is this the case? Well, basically, if I'm building a Universal Windows Platform app, it bundles everything. And um, since the API is rather limited, which where, how you can interact with those bundles, and it's a proprietary part, I have to bundle all the dependencies and everything with the installer. And since I'm not only building for, for example, x64 systems, but also for 32-bit systems and for ARM systems, this bundle gets quite large. And so we are ending up with roughly 400 megabytes each release. Yeah, and um, just a small side note, I was trying to build, since Microsoft, I didn't know if you heard, but Microsoft had with Qualcomm such an initiative where they were publishing Mac, uh, Windows on ARM laptops. And funny thing is you can't cross compile for those. If you would like to cross compile, or would you like to build your UWP application for such a laptop? You have to own one of those laptops. You have then to build on this specific laptop your stupid application. And Microsoft doesn't even offer some kind of build service for those, like they do it for all the other platforms. So, well, I don't own one of those, so I can't build for this device and um, or for this device family. And even if I would try to use a virtual machine, well, there's the problem. You are emulating a virtual machine for ARM, and then inside of that, you have to run Visual Studio. Visual Studio is, uh, is a 64-bit uh, Intel application, so it will be emulated again. And then on top of that, you have to build the application. So I measured it one time. It took me two and a half hours to build a single uh, debug build of my application in this stack of virtual machines and emulation. So that's quite stupid, I'd say. So the easiest way would be just to allow people to cross compile for, for um, ARM64 like they allowed for ARM32 bit. Yeah. And then they won't wonder why, why nobody publishes applications for um, Windows apps. Okay, enough of the rant. Um, we will continue with the next release. I decided, oh, well, cool. There's this new, um, operating system, which is Microsoft is developing, it's called Windows 10 X. It has quite a nice interface. It supports multi-screen devices. And I had optimi optimized um, my application for that. For example, you can see here, the application before was not spanning everywhere. The chat was spanning over two, over two displays. But after that, it was spanning um, only over one display. And later, um, it turned out that Microsoft decided to drop Windows 10 X and all the work I done was for nothing again. In this month, I also started um, doing more UI stuff and started working on the push server so I could receive background notifications in the application. Um, I decided to write this push server in Python. Um, yes, in Python, I decided to write it multi-threaded in Python. Uh, I think uh, everybody who knows Python a bit knows that Python isn't really multi-threaded. If you create a new thread, it still runs only one thread, so it's quite limited. 
but uh, it, the basics worked, like you can see on the bottom right side. I get push notifications, but then I tried to integrate a um, Python XMPP library, and it turned out that all Python XMPP libraries require asynchronous code. And if you know a bit of, about Python, you shouldn't really integrate asynchronous code with threaded Python. So I basically had to rewrite everything. And since Python wasn't the right choice anyway, I decided to rewrite everything in C++ in a couple of later releases. But first of all, was I was quite that frustrated that it didn't work out like I planned and changed horses again and continued working on message archive management and incremental chat loading. So you are able to infinitely, infinitely scroll your chat messages to the top, which was quite a hard task because um, turns out the Windows list view control, which you can see there, isn't really intended to be incrementally loaded. Um, I think that's a quite a big oversight. After that, um, I again continued working on Omemo. I updated my Omemo implementation to 0 0.7. And why did I update it? Why did I update it? Well, because um, I was using the most used database NuGet package for Windows Universal Platform. And it was almost the only one which is, was available. and only remotely up to date. And the database decided always, if I say, hey, I need to you to insert 200 keys, 200 pre keys, for example, in the database, the database says, do I have to store them? And the next time it loses half of them. And it just even went so far that it lost chat messages. And I don't know why. Uh, then I investigated that a bit and found a couple of breaking bugs in this uh, NuGet package which I was using SQLite, submitted them to the author, but the author didn't reply. And even other people actually tried to reach this, this author, but they without success. So basically this library is kind of broken, but it was the only one really available. Yeah, back then. And then I finally found an alternative because Microsoft decided with their grace to port their entity framework core to the Windows Universal platform. And then I finally had an alternative. And then I switched to the entity framework for storing data. Only one problem. Microsoft had a great idea. Well, we have now Project U Reunion. We are merging all the .NET libraries and APIs and everything else. Well, your old, all your old libraries are now incompatible again. And you have to update to your new library. And now I'm using version 3.0 of the entity framework but could the current ver most current version is version 6.0. Yeah, at least this version 3.0 is a long-term release and I'm getting more or less regular bug fix updates for it. So I'm quite happy at least with it. And the performance is quite good, so what matters? And with that, I decided to update my Omemo implementation to 0 0.7 because I saw there was an update and it required you to basically write your own Lib signal library. And with that, I decided, well, cool, I can can throw away this old scrappy um, Lib signal clone I, I was using back then and write my own. And that's the point where I'm currently, I wrote my own Omemo library. And by the way, if you are reading the XAP and it that states, you, you don't really have to read this Lib signal protocol, you have to read it. If you don't read it, you don't get half of the stuff. Uh, and there are other small things uh, broken or missing in the in the XAP, and I'm currently working on an update for that. So, so much to that. Then, in the next couple of releases, I continued working on um, other stuff. I added the curated server list, which guides users through a uh, typing indicator, and after that, the first beta release got released and I rewrote the complete push server in C++, finally an, a nice programming language. Uh, it runs on Linux and it's, it's quite, uh, it works quite nicely. It's nicely multi-threaded. It's able to handle a lot of clients at the same time. Yeah, and that's currently the point of the beta release. And yeah, I added this um, guide through if people are new to XMPP. Okay, 
let's get to today's end. Um, well, um, the current version supports more or less Windows 11. And with Windows 11, there came a lot of rounded corners again. I was, I'm really a fan of sharp corners. And now Windows said, OK, we, we throw that all aboard. And now everything has to be round. So in the last couple of versions, I updated everything to fit Windows 11 um, and updated also the OMEMO implementation to 0.8 because well, it was quite only a, a minor change. Um, yeah. Looks something like this. And I even added indicators if your contact supports the latest OMEMO standard because as far as I'm aware, I'm currently the only client which supports version 0.8 of OMEMO. And that helps the users quite immensely something we can skip. So let's continue with my further plans. Well, basically, my further plans are to implement those missing steps. And in the near future, I would like to optimize more for Windows 11. But currently, I don't have a Windows 11 capable device. So that's a bit hard for me. And um, since I'm not allowed to update my virtual machines, since it does, they don't have a TPM module, it's also quite hard. Well. Besides that, uh, in the near future, I would like to implement stream management so I'm able to quickly resume sessions without uh, having to do the, the whole handshake, which makes receiving chat messages in the background from the push server quite a much easier and um, in a more energy efficient. Then a few MISC pointers. Well, that's basically how the Windows Store now looks. I think it looks looks quite nice, and you're even able to see um, images of your applications. Um, you might think that's something basic, but I'm really appreciating that not right now. And then one last rant, um, the Windows Partner Center, that's the place where you upload your applications to be submitted to the Microsoft Store, is frequently bro broken and it's for example here if i click on i would like to see some kind of diagnostics about the application the, the website is again broken i think for three months now uh, just continuously reloads and even if you would like to upload an application that's not guaranteed to work because i it's also quite frequently broken uh, for a couple of days so um think again if you would like to develop applications for windows uh, the only reason why I'm doing it is because it's something something completely different in uh, in contrast to my usual work, where I'm usually working on Linux with GNOME uh, and GTK and C++. And now that's basically something completely different. And on that final disappointment, um, I will conclude this talk. And if there are any questions, I will be more than happy to answer them. So let's see, get back to the chat. There it is. Many okay. thanks, Fabi. Interesting to talk and also already said, thanks for fighting that front. Um, I think it's really important. And as you said, yeah, you're, you're the kind of only one doing this here. So that's really great, I think. Yeah, thank you. Um, there are the first questions. You can put your voice or put your questions in the public chat. Then I think Fabian, you, you can read yourself that, right? Yeah. So that's, that's it. Uh, you know, um, when, it, when is it out of beta? Well, I plan to be out of beta at the end of next year. Uh, well, initially, I planned to be out of alpha in, in um, I think, March 2018, and then released the final product at the beginning of 2019. Well, it turns out now I'm four years in and finally got a working beta. Um, but there are still a, a couple of things, important things missing, for example, stream management, proper working OMEMO support, uploading images is kind of weird right now, and all such stuff, um, which, required, which is required in my eyes to be an, a, a called release candidate. OMEMO 0 0.3, never. Um, that's something I won't implement again because I had quite that unpleasant experience, experience back then. And let me say to you, the new OMEMO set is far more comfortable to implement and to maintain, um, at least in my eyes. Um... 
are you thinking to also implement a sticker accept at some point? Yes. Uh, I'm using S Signal most of the time because I'm having an iPhone. And I really, I really like reactions. And that's the next thing I would like to implement also soon. And besides that, stickers, I think. <laughs> Uh, that's a nice topic for if I I'm frustrated again from developing in the back end, I will probably have a look at stickers or reactions or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jingle is also a plan I would like at, at long term. I think that's really a long-term plan to also support uh, video calls, um, audio calls, which are encrypted through Memo and Jingle and so on. Let's see how far, how far I get. Okay. And I think that's all with the questions and I can just quickly switch over. Don't need this one anymore. Don't need uh... And just give you a quick look of the actual um, application. Starting, uh, it's quite a bit slow right now because I'm using a debug build, so be aware of that. Usually, if you download it from the App Store, it's quite blazing fast, but because I'm using debug build here, it might be slow in some edges. Um, then, yeah, well, that's the newbie introduction and then well that's basically the chat application you can see here here that's the uh, com team chat MOOC. you also can see for example here that's the current um, contact information page and also one thing that's currently missing i don't support profile pictures at all so that's also a thing in the near future which i would like to implement before i could would able to call my application stable because that's quite necessary in my eyes yeah besides that what else can i show well you're able to change the presence let's have a look at the that's basically it um are there any other questions? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the experience is quite different in Windows. Um, if you are spoiled from Linux or Android, Windows is quite different in some cases. Um, I think the most important case is on Windows, everything you have to pay for. Um, and if you don't want to pay for something, well, it's full of adware, uh, spam, and so on. And that's really something I hate on Windows. At the beginning of starting this project, I didn't think this was quite so much work. Um, I thought, well, you just send a couple of messages, receive a couple of messages. Um, what could be so hard on that? Then you send images manage and your subscriptions well what could be so hard on that turns out i'm now four years in and well basically every minute in my free time goes on to that project and i only have this feature set quite stably working so yeah <laughs> you might have mentioned this in the talk um and i missed it but did you write your own xmpp implementation or were you using an existing one for windows um, initially, I tried to use an existing implementation for Windows, but it turned out they were all incompatible with UWP, the .NET framework there. So I started to write my complete own um, XMPP library. So basically everything in the client is written by myself, except the database and uh, some cryptographic routines, which I didn't feel to implement um, because of all the reasons like um, you make errors, security issues, you have to maintain those, yeah. As a follow-up then, um, were, were there any parts of the XMPP implementation that you found particularly nice to work with and easy to build and uh, or any that you found especially frustrating and difficult to build? 
Mm. Especially hard. I think the hardest part currently was Omemo um, because this has it's not hard in doing, but it's hard in getting into it. Um, you have to read basically the, all the cryptographic stuff, get it right, and hope everything works. Quite nice, I think. Uh, chat state. I was quite astonished how easy it is to send the chat state or confirmation messages if somebody has received you, your chat message and how to display those. That was quite a pleasant experience. I think that's it. Thanks, and Fabian. Goodbye.